Plymouth College Presents. I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Andrews, OPM, who left the college in 2019. Ben's an EPE fencer with a whole host of selections and medals at both national and international uh, level. Ben, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Hope you're well. Can I just... Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Can I just start, I suppose, by asking you to introduce yourself to the people who might be watching, the students and the community who might not necessarily know um, have met you? just a bit about your sport and a bit about your background and a bit about what you're doing now yeah so currently at the moment i'm working at our bus not latham bank in exeter um as a business support executive but obviously at the moment i'm doing that from my bedroom as it were um trying to fit in all the all the fencing and training as well um it's quite tough but but yeah it's um everyone's in the same boat so so it's all good i think starting when I began fencing when I was nine at King's Primary School, which is kind of just down the road road from the college. Um, and yeah, I, I instantly fell in love with it. Took up quite a few other sports at the same time. So did archery, judo, all the kind of non-conventional ones as it were. I wasn't, wasn't a massive fan of football or, or things like that. Um, and yeah, I think from an early age, I really enjoyed it. And obviously the, the success kind of came from there and, I won the under twelve um, Southwest Championships when I was nine, um, which is something that hadn't been done before. So that kind of made me look at a school that had a, a really strong fencing and modern pentathlon program, um, and Plymouth College definitely stood out. So um, I managed to um, get into the school in year seven with a with a fencing scholarship, um, and since then it's just been kind of working my way up in terms of winning national titles and then representing England in year eight and nine and, and Great Britain after that. So I think it was, um, yeah, it's been, looking back, it seems like quite a long time, but, but it's definitely gone gone very quickly. Just on that sort of choosing fencing, I suppose, you sort of said they've you've done lots of individual sports and lots of different things. Was it that Southwest Championship win that made you go, this is the sport for me, or was it just a natural sort of progression through through the, the age groups, or or what made you choose fencing over judo? Let's say. Yeah, I think it was almost the the way up between the physical and mental kind of side of the sport that I quite liked. You could kind of, if you were faster than someone, you could beat them. But then, if someone was tactically more switched on, they could have the advantage as well. So. I think I, I still did rugby and, and hockey, all the team sports at Plymouth College. And um, I was actually goalkeeper in hockey, which I think being six foot when you're in year seven <laughs> def- definitely helps. Um, but yeah, I, I, for some reason, I kind of always was drawn back to the individual sports. Um, I think kind of having that individual pressure was quite nice. I quite liked that. Um, maybe not having to re- rely on teammates as well, but I think... Going on through my development as a fencer, I think joining the the national team and then being part of a squad, you kind of get that team ethos back, and you're you're then again part of a team. So, so yeah, that's kind of a bit about what I've done. And I think I also did squash up until year ten, um, kind of just once a week, just keeping my fitness up really. And um, it's quite an interesting story actually. Looking back at the um, the session you did with Mike Cooper, it kind of reminded me that um, I think it was year nine or ten. Um, it was me, Mike, um, and a few others in chief took us up to the uh, national championships um, schools event for squash, and um, yeah, not really knowing the rules. And I think I think Mike was kind of the same, but, but was slightly better than me. So so yeah, that was definitely interesting, and we we were actually on our way to kind of leave the event and they turned around and said oh you you won your medals and we were like sorry what and um yeah we managed to come third which was um yeah quite quite unreal but but yeah that was um definitely a good experience um just just on that for for those who don't know don't necessarily know a huge amount about fencing perhaps you referred to that team bit there and and, and you obviously you fence individually but you also fence as part of a team in certain competitions don't you yeah could you explain that a little bit to those who might not know quite so much about the the team element of fencing yeah definitely so when you're kind of picked for england and great britain teams you go as a squad of 12 and then normally it's the top 
four or three in the in the squad that get to compete on the Sunday. So everyone competes um, individually on the Saturday, and then um, the rest kind of stay on f- for the Sunday. And that's um, almost like a knockout um, competition against pretty much every um, country in the world, which is it's quite quite a good sense of pride knowing that you're represents your country not only on an individual level but as a team as well um and yeah there's been some really good successes we've had this year in beating the likes of Russia and things like that so so yeah I think the team element's quite quite a big part of the sport because on one day you're probably competing against the same people and then the next you've got to kind of come back together with everyone and and face the challenge kind of head on together that's quite interesting isn't it because I think fencing is one of those sports where people who don't necessarily know a huge amount about it would say well that's one of the most individual sports you can do but actually there is a huge element of team to it and actually representing your country there and, and working with others to try and get as many points win as many bouts or, or fights as you can in order to try and get a medal is actually a big part of it and, and that's something that perhaps those guys who are looking at it going oh it's an individual sport it's not for me well actually maybe that isn't the, isn't the case maybe it is for you maybe it appeals to everybody for that reason and it's, yeah it's, definitely know. I think even even at kind of like a um, a regional level as well there's so many competitions that kind of bring in this this team element which is such a big part of of sports in general and I think yeah it's um trying to move forward together with that same collective goal. Brilliant. Uh, just in terms of um, asking you some questions really about your, your sporting experiences then, if I can, do you have a, a most memorable sporting moment? Is there something that you always look back on and go, wow, I was really pleased that I was a part of that as a fencer or as anything really? Yeah, I think definitely the squash one kind of, like the more I think of it. But um, yeah, I think... Um, going back kind of a few years, it was probably um, holding both the under-20 and under-23 uh, British Championships titles when I was 17, um, which I managed to do in my final year of A-level. But I think probably the the more kind of notable one would probably only be going back um, a few months to February where I um, made the quarter-final of the Junior European Championships. Um and I think that was that was a big kind of um, progression for me, especially because uh, that was the, I was the first British men's epist to ever reach the junior European quarterfinals. So I think to be the first of someone to do something, it was was quite a big thing. And that must give you real confidence for the future in terms of your development and your progression, and and having achieved such great things at such a young age. In terms of when you're working at age groups, but being a lot younger than those who might be competing in that age group, it must fill you with confidence that actually, you know, you've got a, a really bright career ahead of you, which is obvious, but actually you, you've got a real chance of being a, you know, a genuine medal contender in, in, at huge, huge events in, in the future at open level. Yeah, and I think, um, unfortunately, I was meant to be competing in uh, the World Championships in August, which were meant to be in uh, America, actually. Um, but obviously, that was that was cut short, so that's postponed at the moment, but I, I doubt they'll resume the season I think I'll go to the next one but yeah it's a bit of a shame to kind of finish it and, and not have that that competition yeah. but I've still got another year in the age category so yeah it's um, looking forward to it I guess it must have been quite difficult in that you finished in the February that you had that success in the February and actually almost within a month that must have been one of the last competitions you were involved in before everything shut down and, and, and sort of you're, you're on a high and then actually you've got to wait maybe six months maybe longer until you can actually get back competing again that must have been quite a challenge for you yeah definitely I think if it had happened kind of midway or to the start of the season with the lockdown and everything I think that would have been probably slightly harder to kind of take on the chin but I think the fact that the season was almost over apart from the world championships um, kind of only cutting the season short by a month or two wasn't a massive impact, but obviously it would have been nice to kind of see out and do all the competition. I mean, I know you've said that they are, you think they're in the season. Is the World Championships an annual event? It's, it's not, presumably. So will they move that into another year or a bit like the Dominion no, Olympics? It's, um, it's every year, oh, actually, okay. yeah. So it's, so it's about um, about this time every year. So I, there, were, there was talk of pushing it to kind of September, October time, but yeah, I can't imagine that that happening. It would be sensible just to kind of start the season fresh. Um, 
which as much as it's kind of an annoyance, it's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, but but you, it mean it means I suppose on a positive, you're going to get your chance potentially next year, the year after, and, and it, perhaps yeah, something like an Olympics yeah. where they've moved it. There might be less opportunities. There is if it's if it's annual, there's a great opportunity for you to say, well, actually, it didn't happen this year, and that's not my fault. But next year or the year after, or you know, for you've got a long career ahead of you, really, haven't you? So, um, yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, is there is there one thing in sport that you're most proud of? Is there one thing you've done or one place you've been or one, I don't know, group you represented that you would just say, that's the thing I'm most proud of in my sporting career so far? Yeah, I think um, definitely representing Great Britain at a world championship level has definitely been kind of one of the highlights, I think. Knowing that you're in the top three in your country to... Um, to represent Great Britain is definitely a, a big achievement. I think it's quite a big um, aspiration when you're growing up, especially if you're not um, at the top of your game, if you're in the top 10 or whatever. But yeah, I think it's just the hard work and kind of the dedication that kind of sets you on that path to to achieve those things. How did you deal with that as a, as a youngster in, in the sense that in something like fencing, it's very clear you've got to be in the top three, let's say, and you might know where you are. You're ranked. So as you're going up through the age groups, you sort of know where you are. How did you deal with that, I suppose, an expectation that you had to make the top three or the disappointment of maybe not quite being where you were? In a team sport, you might get into a team in one of two or three positions. In fencing, you are almost, there's a ranking, it's really clear where you are. How did that play out in your mind or in terms of your attitude towards training as you were, as you were going up through the levels and the ages? Yeah, I think it's definitely hard when you've got this, um, certainly when I was younger, this online kind of ranking system where you had, you knew that if you went to a competition and you weren't um, in the top three or beating these other fences, then they'd kind of jump jump you or leapfrog you in the rankings and maybe go to the competition that you um, kind of set your eyes on going to. But I think it's kind of just taking each competition at a time. Um, but yeah, in training, it's kind of, trying to brush off maybe the, the disappointment of a previous competition and I find the best way to kind of deal with things like that is just to get straight back to training and kind of don't let yourself think about that too much because in fencing especially there's so many competitions that um, come up through the, the calendar year there's so many more opportunities. And it, it must be the sort of sport as well where because of the precision nature of it, you know, you are and, and the one-on-one element of it, you're going to lose. You're not going to win every time. You know, it's it's not, it's it's just never going to happen. You're never going to win everything that you compete in. So you, perhaps you have to get used to disappointment and, and not succeeding because it's really small margins. And it actually, losing is, is a big part of fencing in a, in a sense, which it might not be in team sports if you've got a really dominant team. Yeah, definitely. I think that margin thing's so important as well because sometimes you win and lose a fight by milliseconds or, or, or one hit not going your way or not in your favour in terms of how the referee sees it as well. So, yeah, I think it's um, it's definitely tough to kind of pick yourself back up, but the more times you kind of go through it, the, the easier it is. I think when you're younger, it's kind of, say you lost in the, the Truro county cup or whatever it's kind of the end of the world for for that weekend but i think the older you get it kind of puts everything into perspective and it sounds like you've got quite a philosophical way of dealing with that now and you just you, you, you know it's become part of you and you know it's going to happen and you just go right i'm just going to get on with the next one don't worry about what's happened i can't change it let's worry about yeah. what's what's happening rather than what's happened. yeah I, I like to see it as kind of it wouldn't be a challenge if you were always kind of winning all the time and i think it's kind of it feels a lot better when you kind of come off the back of a defeat or something to then win a big championships or something like that. And so that you feel more rewarded because you've had that failure and then you've gone on to achieve the success. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's a really interesting sort of way of looking at it actually and actually probably a good way in terms of your own mental health and your own well-being as well, not getting too head up about these things. Yeah, no, certainly, yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, and, and you, we've, you've talked there about things that you're really proud of and you've, you've really achieved, have you got a, a biggest disappointment, something that you think, I just wish I'd either approached that differently or I just w- wish that had gone slightly differently for me. And, and if you have, would you be willing to share it with us? Yeah, definitely. I think probably looking back um, two years from now, it was at the European Championships, um, which is kind of slightly different to how this one went, which kind of says how, how the sport is. But yeah, I kind of went into the competition um, 
kind of um, probably overlooking the first um, pool round. So you have a round where you fence um, everyone in your group, um, normally about six people, and then um, they kind of narrow it down to who gets to compete in the in the kind of knockout stages to get to the final. Um, and I kind of overlooked the first round, I think, um, yeah, probably coming off the back of some some victories domestically, I kind of underestimated how much kind of energy and effort I should put into the into this first round. So, yeah, it all went kind of very quickly as as most losses do, and um, yeah, it was quite hard to take at the time. But I think knowing that I went back and trained as hard as I could, and obviously it paid off paid off this year. Uh, evidently, yeah. So you, you, I suppose you've learned your lesson there in terms of being disappointed, but actually going, do you know what, in, next time this isn't going to happen again, and then obviously achieving amazing things <laughs> two years down the line is, is, is a testament to you, and it's, it's, it's a great story, really, of actually don't underestimate people, work hard, and that, that hard work will get you there in the end, which obviously it has, which is, which is brilliant. Um, what would you say the biggest lesson you've learned through sport is? Um, I think probably the fact that hard work kind of pays off in everything that you do, I think, coming from it from a sports perspective or, or an academic one as well, I think the more time and energy you commit yourself to doing one thing, I think when I was growing up, I tried to have the academics and the fencing going side by side. And the more I kind of understood it, it was separating the two in a way. So you had dedicated time to do the fencing training and then to study as well. So the two never kind of overlapped in a way, um, which I think was quite good, especially when I went away to World Cup, say in Turkey or something, I'd get all my work and revision done the week prior to, to going. And then when I was out there, I didn't take kind of any um, kind of schoolwork with me. So you kind of separate the two, um, which I found worked really well. I know some people like to revise when they're at competitions and things, but I kind of like to switch off and, and, do one to the best of my ability and then do the other the same. That's really interesting. And actually, that's probably something that some of our, our students can learn from in terms of I'm now at a competition and that's my focus. I'm now at school and that's my focus. And almost having the, yeah. the two separate, which is a really interesting way of doing it. Because I know someone like a Tom Daly, when we've spoken to him in the past, has said something very similar. But other people have said the opposite. And, it, and it's obviously everyone does their own way. But that's that's really interesting to hear you talk about that. Did, did you did you feel you had to compromise anything in order to do so well academically and to do so well at fencing? Or did you manage to get the balance right, looking back on it now, do you think? Um, I think, probably looking back, there was a few kind of social events and parties that, that you do inevitably miss out on. I think anything that you do, you kind of um, miss out sometimes. But I think, no, there's no there's no kind of compromises or regrets that I had. I think I think the school was, was really good, actually, in the way that I was able to catch up on work um, and they'd kind of fit in around, say, I was off to the European Championships in Russia for a week during my A-levels, which isn't ideal. <laughs> You've got to kind of plan for these situations and um, they were doing lessons with me at lunch times and after school which looking back at it you kind of took for granted but I think that was um, definitely something that was worthwhile. Uh, one thing I'd say about you having sort of known you for a little while is, is you were you were always very dedicated to what you were doing and it was you know if you were coming to a lesson you were giving 100% to that lesson and that's sort of what you're saying about compartmentalising things and that, that will have been really helpful for you I suspect but also a lesson for our guys that Ben didn't just turn up and go well I'm in the lesson now and I'm not really here I'm just listening to what you're saying and sort of pretending it was always a commitment to it and that obviously has helped you in the long run in terms of managing to achieve really good grades but also achieve amazing things on a fencing piece and, and in your sport of your choice which is which is a, you know great um, just in terms of, of getting into fencing again is, is there somebody or, or who's your biggest inspiration to pursue shoe fencing or to choose fencing or your biggest supporters maybe um i think growing up i kind of took the sport on because it was offered as a kind of extracurriculum activity and i kind of saw it as something different and yeah i, I don't really know why I, why i took it up <laughs> but i think as soon as i did i i instantly kind of fell in love with it but yeah i think growing up biggest support is definitely the family and friends that kind of push you to definitely achieve your goals and I think having role models like 
Tom Daly and Ruta, who were at the school when I joined um, in 2012. So I joined and then they were off to um, the Summer Olympics, which is quite an eye-opener. <laughs> and um, to kind of think back at it was, was a great experience. And I can remember asking Tom Daly for his autograph, kind of running up to him in year seven, <laughs> as, as everyone did. And um, yeah, kind of looking back when I, when I had a chat with him um, about a year ago, um, yeah, I, I reminded him about the story and he, he definitely remembered it, which is a bit embarrassing, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was good at the time. And your, your family obviously played a really important part in, in terms of the support they've given you, you know, driving you to competitions, and not least, but everything else. And and your your sister's also involved in sort of multi-eventing and fencing in particular, isn't she? And, and, and have they been... Um, did, did your parents were your parents involved, or was that? Did you just pick it up from this extracurricular club? Have they ever been involved in fencing outside of you you being involved? No, definitely not. And um, yeah, it's kind of strange because normally if you pick rugby or something, your your dad's played rugby or something like that. But but no, I think there was a lot of time that they kind of sacrificed in terms of driving you to competitions or or taking that time off to go and support you and things like that. So yeah, and the count countless amount of training sessions that they've picked you up from when maybe it hasn't gone so well and you're not you're not too happy but yeah the, there's definitely a lot of sacrifice brilliant uh, a couple more questions if I can if, you, if you're happy to sort of answer them for me um what would the best piece of advice or what pieces of advice might you give to the young men and women who are sat where you were sat five years ago um just about trying to pursue their dreams whether that be in sport or in academia um how what would you say to them um, I'd probably go back to the hard work kind of ethos of it. Um, probably also looking at um, taking as many opportunities as you, as you can. Uh, I think growing up, there was a lot of opportunities that were kind of given to me and I managed to kind of take them as they came. Squash being one of those examples where you're kind of thrown into a situation where maybe you're not massively comfortable with it, but um, in the end, it teaches you kind of so many lessons, and you and you kind of meet people that you wouldn't wouldn't have before. And I think going outside of your comfort zone is is a really healthy thing. So trying something new as well. Brilliant. Uh, can I just just before I ask the last question, and um, just turn to what you're doing outside of fencing now, because your route's been quite interesting. And and some of our guys at school might be sat there going. I'm a couple of years away from leaving and, and actually Ben's now working in a bank and, and, and how did that come about? Can you can you perhaps tell us how you went from Plymouth College to working for Arbuthnet Latham? Yeah, so um, it would have been probably end of my GCSE start of A-levels. I contacted a lot of local businesses and firms within the South West kind of looking for a sponsorship to sponsor my fencing season or career and um, and they were really on board with the idea and I managed to kind of secure sponsorship with them for, for a few years, which was great. Um, and kind of off the back of that, I wanted to explore the avenue of, of going into banking. I really enjoyed economics and business at school. Um, so it kind of worked really well. And I kind of said, is there any work experience that I could do here? Maybe if it's a week in summer or something like that. So I did, I think, two lots of work experience during the summer throughout my A-levels, which was um, really beneficial just to work on these hands-on projects straight into industry. Um, and I was coming up to kind of leave school and, and do the UCAS, and I couldn't, I couldn't really see a university that had the economics side and the fencing side um, together. Um, so I kind of approached the bank again and said, what are your thoughts on going straight into work and they were really on board with the idea and um, a job became available in the extra office and I kind of took that with both hands and started um, I think three four months after I left school which was which was really good and I've, I've enjoyed it kind of ever since. And are you is it something you're looking to continue you're not looking to go to university later on you just at the moment all things being equal you're very happy doing what you're doing and there's progression there and you're you're in that now for hopefully for a, a while. Yeah, definitely. I think there's always the opportunity to go to university later down the line if I find something that I really want to study or things like that, which is definitely a thing that's probably overlooked slightly. I think people think that you go to university straight out of school, but um, 
yeah, I think there's so many opportunities within um, the company that I work for. I could go and work at their office in London and train up there. It's um, yeah, it's quite quite open in that respect. So that and they've been quite supportive in the supporting my fencing as well, which which also helps. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good story, and it's slightly different that route, which is why I sort of wanted to to get your opinion on it because it's that's something that might inspire some people at school who might not be looking at university. And, and that basically came about because you were proactive enough to send an email or a series of emails to a group of companies and say, if you don't ask, you don't get to an extent. And maybe that's something that some of our young men and women can learn from, that actually if you're prepared to put yourself out there and, and potentially be rejected by people who say, no, we're not interested, good things might come of that. So being brave and being willing to step forward and, and give things a go is, is, is a really good message there. Just, just the last question, if, if you're happy to answer it. What are, you, what are your goals? What are, you, what are you looking to achieve in the next couple of years, um, in, in fencing in particular? What, what, what are you aiming to do? Where, where do you hope to be in, let's say, 12 months' time or two years' time, assuming that coronavirus disappears off quickly and we're, we're back, to, back to normal from next season, let's yeah. say, whatever that is? Yeah, I think, obviously, hoping everything starts. Um, yeah, I imagine September, October time, but obviously nobody really knows, I think. It would be really nice to kind of continue the trend of um, winning medals internationally at World Cups and, and hopefully on the biggest stages of World Championships as well. Um, I think obviously the long-term goal would definitely be to get to the Olympics and win medals at senior championships and things like that, which I think any young athlete's dream is is to get to the Olympics. And yeah, it's, um, it'll be quite a challenge because you've got to be kind of top 16 in the world. Um but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, definitely. And would that be 2024 in Paris or would you be looking at 2028 or do you have an, an Olympics in mind as a sort of a goal or is that just so far ahead of you that actually it's just taking it as it comes? Yeah, I think it's it's still quite quite a way away. I think a lot of fences that are reaching their peak are kind of late 20s, early 30s. So I think I've still got um, quite a few years and I yeah. think the experience is such a, such a big thing in the sport of fencing so I think the more time you have competing at a high level definitely pays off so yeah I think definitely 2028 or, or 2024 if I'm lucky yeah but that's that's you know a great thing to achieve or to aspire to isn't it and and with it coming around you know even 2032 you know you'll yeah. still be 30 odd that'll be it you know it's not it's not that far away it's not um, it's, it's certainly achievable Ben it's been great to chat and thank you so much for your time I, I really appreciate it and I'm sure the young men and women who are watching this will, will take a lot from what you've said um, hopefully when, when things settle down and when life goes back to what normal whatever that is uh, we might be able at some point to get you in to talk to some of our kids face to face but obviously that isn't possible at the moment um, but I really appreciate your time and everything you've, you've, you've talked about there it's, it's really great to hear your story so thank you very much that was great. Thanks, Phil.